never really had a time where I could just like come together with a mixed race, like mixed group, and just talk about, you know, racism and like everything that impacts it. And, like we all want the same thing, we all want like change, we all want to like work on this. Talking about structural racism in this space, um, talking about racism and, and all of that is by allowing ourselves to, to feel it, we can heal and deal and see each other more clearly. Before, when I thought about racism, I thought about it more as like an interpersonal problem. I didn't really understand it systemically. Especially for myself, I just thought, you know, I'm not racist, I'm not racist towards other people. You, you just learn so much more about yourself through this process and in, like, in the world that you're living in and all that you're, like, and that by, like, isolating yourself, like, all that you're missing out on and it's, like, I don't know, it feels, it's, like, it feels kind of liberating going through the process. Like, everybody's avoiding it. Everybody's just moving on with their lives, not even thinking twice about it. Our society really built up on not talking about racism, if that's the main problem. No matter what race you identify as, feelings are gonna come up. Whether those feelings are anger or guilt, it depends. Um, but you're gonna need a place to talk about these things. And you need to have a safe space where you can talk to people and where you can just say what's been hard for you and say what's good, what's working for you, help other people out. I feel like I can just, just be chill and like do whatever because I don't have to worry about people like judging me like, oh, like that's what all black people do. It hurts so much to, um to think about it. I know my group's got me, you know. I wish I know I got y'all too. Really curious to learn about this stuff. You know, inside and out, how deep it goes, how far back it goes, you know. How do we t t walk, walk the walk besides the talk? You're born with it, right? And your experience of it is, oh well, I must deserve it. This must mean I'm better than you, you know? So it's easy to go there in your mind when you are raised in a context where you just internalize. And the way that we visioned the project was that we were going to try and impact health by understanding and, and really undoing racism with a group of young people. To do that, we felt like we really needed to have youth that identified as white and youth of color doing the work together. And I can tell you, racism is not an easy thing to live with. Racism is not an easy thing to talk about. But I feel that if we can just begin to have this dialogue in a much greater way, change will come. That change for me happens on the individual level, you know, the interpersonal level and on the institutional level. If we think of the social determinants of health, which are what inspire or like drive health equity work, those are all also driven and sort of um, affected by racism. I think the health status of the people that live around here is definitely very, very good. Like very low infant mortality rate, very low rates of diabetes and high blood pressure certainly lower than what I see in my family and my side of the community. Um, you can just tell by these houses. I mean, they're not clustered together. There's not enough space. So now you see a bodega, and now you see the townhouses that are completely adjacent, um, much more clustered residency. It's a whole different world. And in case, there wasn't a big difference. Now you clearly see the appearance of public housing or the projects. I do feel a sense of community here, and although we all literally physically clump together, um, in the same sense, I do feel that like there's a strong bond between the people who live here. How does a Youth Racial Healing Project become a project for a community health center? Uh, well, we provide great health care for the people who come through our doors and get health care, but we're also thinking about the health of the community. And all these things in the community that impact health, all these are impacted by race. As an organization that cares about community health, we have to address racism. And what's a better place to start than with young people? In terms of getting support for this project, nationally the world of public health has really come to see health equity as a key to their mission and to what pu the public health world does. 
And so we have really become part of that. We work with our, the Public Health Commission here in Boston, which has a big focus on understanding uh, not just uh, how uh, social factors determine health, but race in how race in, racism in particular affects health. And also nationally, there's a lot of conversation about this. There's, there's a lot of foundations that are, and funders that are looking to find people who can do this work and to support the work. So we are really part of something that's going on around the country. With a new set of eyes, okay? So you're going to be, these, once you understand these, you're going to live with all of them for your whole life. We right? have recruited a very intentional mixed race group. And what we do with them is we meet Mondays and Wednesdays. On Mondays, we do more training around moving into racial justice language and public health and what is a health equity issue? You know, how do you frame things using racial justice language? What's epidemiology? How do we look at this data to understand it? Like racism, it's not like, People are gonna come up to you and be like, "Oh, f you because you're you, you're brown." Nah, it's like it's implemented into our school system. It's implemented into every system that we have. Like now, you understand when you're walking down the street, the random stare that you get from somebody. You understand why the lady at the store talks to your mom the way she talks to your mom when she asks for some translator, or or when she comes with her accent. You understand. You understand the why behind so many things, like before you just roam the world not knowing. Wednesdays is really that what we call the higher risk activities. So that's when we need to take each other on. That's the space where we do speak outs. That's the space where we do um, affinity groups, because um, those tend to be higher risk. That's the space where we do healing circles. So if two young people are struggling, then we physically, literally gather around them and help them work it out. And we just give them a way to speak knowing that we got your back, we love you for taking this risk, and they, they get to these incredible moments of repair and, and a trust that I, I've never seen before. This is going to be a little mini speak out, all right, and it's called Inner Circle, okay, and you're going to speak and start the circle from this perspective. Your job is to think about what this means for you, and you may interject, if you wish, if you want to challenge her with what she's saying, you can do that. I can't love you until I love myself. I have, I don't feel comfortable when people challenge me. Around my, like I've a little bit taken like the easy way out and that I've like tried to um, like surround myself and get closer to people who share my opinions so that like these confrontations don't come up. I would ask you if you could maybe help me out in like support with that and help sort of be an ally with that. I edit a lot in my head before I like say anything and it's because like like if I were to get emotional I wouldn't want it to like like ruin what I was saying. And this is my skin I need you to know me. Like being a my skin color to love myself for the fact that like like there's so much negative related to my skin color out there even though it's not like most of it, most of it ain't true but it's just like like there's so many bad things supposedly that associate with my skin color that sometimes you find yourself believing certain things and that really gets hard for me like I'm really a bad person just because I was born this color like that can't be true I don't feel like a bad person it's like definitely something I struggle with just like having to grow up like like almost like learning to not love yourself through the, like the outside world. No, you need to do this, you need to add this to your face, you need to do this to your hair, you need to do this to your clothing. With racism, the way that it thrives is by ensuring that none of us are gonna talk about it so none of us are gonna feel anything. And in many ways you can liken this to any kind of trauma that is out there where people get to the point where they're either so angry and so hurting and so much in pain that they can't speak or they completely um, block all those feelings. I also has to come my mom because she always tells me, oh, just stick with the white people because that's the only way to succeed in this country. Like, because like, if you think you're Latino, It may look like white people are more successful, but what she doesn't know is that there's a system of advantage based on race, and that's why it happens that way. It's not because we're less smarter than them, it's just that's how it really is. There's like walls out there holding us back. So when they cut bilingual education in 2003, um, and I moved into like what they called regular class, which is very 
bad now that I think of it. But um, what they called regular class, which was like all English, um, I dropped the accent for my name. If I'm with like brown people and like I feel like they're offending me or like a white person offended me, like I feel like I can tell my brown friends, but like if I'm with a white person, like I feel like I'm almost offending them by telling them that they offended me. The only way that racism could exist is if people were silent and not having any feelings about it. So we're inviting kids to be able to have all of that in this space, but that's not without consequences. It feels really hard um, to like to like mess up or like cause injury or not be able to like feel like I'm accessing that healing. And it frustrates me how they're not doing the work and I'm doing the work, mm -hmm. and they don't want to like take in my perspective of what I've been learning, what I've seen. And um, it just like frustrates me how he explained to them and he's just saying, oh, that's just one of his philosophies again, whatever. Mm -hmm. I was like, it's not my philosophy. It's what I've been learning and I'm continuing to work to heal from the process. This group, but you have no it's very uncomfortable sometimes. Not. And sometimes we've even gone so far as to say when they've been in the height of some sort of angry or painful moments, what does it mean to be able to have a, an argument with someone or a challenge with someone and know that you're in safe ground, that no one's going to get hurt emotionally or physically, that you're going to be able to work it out and that there's a commitment from the group to help you do that. If you feel like you're the only one feeling a certain way, like you don't want to say it out loud and then feel like there's no support because this group is all about supporting each other. Like a different experience of privilege that, um, that like it sucks because it like comes into like every relationship, every di every different dynamic, and you can't ever you can't ever take that away. You can't ever not have that analysis of like a friendship. Like I just want to be your friend. I just want to know your heart. To walk away from it would be to acknowledge how much of a privilege I have as a white person, because if I was a person of color, I couldn't go a day without coming across this kind of racism. But in my daily life, I don't see it, or I wouldn't see it. But now that I'm a part of this. I see it all the time and I don't, I can't shut off that part of my brain. And, and you have to be ready to like let things hurt because it, it, it sucks at first. It wasn't fun. It's not always fun now, but you just have to kind of, I don't want to say suffer through it because it makes it sound like it's some terrible thing, but you just have to get through and you have to work through it because if you give up, you're not going to get anywhere and you're just going to go backwards and you're just going to start to get angry and you're never going to move on. We all seem to have different phases, which is like trusting people, then opening up, and then actually like giving out stories about what times you actually been through when it came to racism. And basically that right there is what helps release all that. Like it helps us open up and to trust each other. Well, during it, the first time I learned a lot of stuff that I never even imagined like could have been even like racist and stuff, and it ended up being a really, really important part of my life, and I didn't want to really give it up. I mean, doing racism work is really, really tough on some people, and sometimes it's hard to keep going, and um, you're gonna hit a wall where you don't want to come back, but you gotta push through it, because it, it ends up being worth it in the end. Like, I know I'm never gonna have the person of color experience. I know I can never, I can't change that, but uh, I don't know, I just, like, I need you to know me too. The challenging part has been trying to help uh, the rest of the world understand how important this is. The, the young people um, were so ready and open to doing this work. It's been, it's been truly beautiful to watch them, um, how accepting they are of this, how ready they are to learn this stuff, um, how non-judgmental they are of each other, how supportive they are of each other. We actually care about how each other is feeling now, like since we just got so serious into the work, you know? I am mean, still stuck there, like, regardless of how much I need. The academic environment, I feel like I always get the work. You'll notice that it's mostly only people of color time theory. We definitely need to rethink the way that we work around public health. I think that um, we've gotten better, but in the past it's usually been more personal behaviors and now we need to start thinking more big picture. But I believe young people are the ones that will finally get that message across this nation. But a lot of people aren't getting it, so I feel like it really is like 
our responsibility, like the, the whole racial healing team, to, to get this word out because people don't know what's going on. If you don't know what's actually happening, then you, you won't know how to change it. We're all doing such a good thing and we have to be able to spread it, you know? Like we can't just keep it within this like little room in Southern Make Lane Health Center. We have to bring this out into the world. They are putting themselves out there because they believe, they really believe that this could make a change. But if we as adults don't get on that bandwagon and start to do something ourselves, then they will continue to be disappointed and continue to be discouraged and it will end. So my hope is that in addition to looking and saying, wow, those, those teens, they're tremendous. Yes, they are all that. But you as adults and you, what is your part? And you, what is your part? What can you contribute?